Meningitis. Meningitis is a clinical syndrome characterized by inflammation of the meninges, the three layers of membranes that enclose the brain and spinal cord. Meningitis is an inflammation of the meninges, the protective membranes that surround the brain and spinal cord. Classification Meningitis is classified as aseptic or septic. In aseptic meningitis, bacteria are not the cause of the inflammation, the cause is viral or secondary to lymphoma, leukemia, or brain abscess. Septic meningitis refers to meningitis caused by bacteria, most commonly Neisseria meningitidis, although Haemophilus influenzae and Streptococcus pneumoniae are also causative agents. Pathophysiology Causes Causes of meningitis include bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and drugs, e.g., NSAIDs, metronidazole, and 4 immunoglobulin, 4 Ig. Bacteria S. pneumoniae, a gram-positive coccus, is the most common bacterial cause of meningitis. Viruses Enteroviruses account for of the majority of cases of aseptic meningitis in children, the non-polio enteroviruses, NPEVs, account for approximately 90% of cases of viral meningitis in which a specific pathogen can be identified. The mumps virus is the most common cause of aseptic meningitis in unimmunized populations, occurring in 30% of all patients with mumps. Fungi Cryptococcus neoformans is an encapsulated, yeast-like fungus that is ubiquitous, coccidioides immitis is a soil-based, dimorphic fungus that exists in mycelial and yeast, spherule, forms, blastomyces dermatitidis is a dimorphic fungus that has been reported to be endemic in North America, e.g., in the Mississippi and Ohio River basins. Parasite Angiostrongylus cantonensis, the rat lungworm, can cause eosinophilic meningitis, pleocytosis with more than 10% eosinophils, in humans, nadostoma spinigerum, a GI parasite of wild and domestic dogs and cats, may cause eosinophilic meningoencephalitis, nadostoma spinigerum, a GI parasite of wild and domestic dogs and cats, may cause eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. Clinical Manifestations Headache and fever are frequently the initial symptoms. Fever tends to remain high throughout the course of the illness. The headache is usually severe as a result of meningeal irritation. Neutral rigidity, stiff neck, is an early sign. Any attempts at flexion of the head are difficult because of spasms in the muscles of the neck. Forceful flexion causes severe pain. Positive Koenig's sign, when the patient is lying with the thigh flexed on the abdomen, the leg cannot be completely extended. Positive Brudzinski's sign, when the patient's neck is flexed, flexion of the knees and hips is produced, when passive flexion of the lower extremity of one side is made, a similar movement is seen in the opposite extremity. Photophobia, extreme sensitivity to light, this finding is common, although the cause is unclear. A rash can be a striking feature of N meningitis infection, occurring in about half of patients with this type of meningitis. Skin lesions develop, ranging from a petechial rash with purpuric lesions to large areas of ecchymosis. Disorientation and memory impairment are common early in the course of the illness. The changes depend on the severity of the infection as well as the individual response to the physiologic processes. Behavioral manifestations are also common. As the illness progresses, lethargy, unresponsiveness, and coma may develop. Seizures and increased intracranial pressure ICP, are also associated with meningitis. Seizures occur secondary to focal areas of cortical irritability. Intracranial pressure increases secondary to accumulation of purulent exudate. The initial signs of increased ICP include decreased level of consciousness and focal motor deficits. If ICP is not controlled, the uncus of the temporal lobe may herniate through the tentorium into the brainstem. Brainstem herniation is a life-threatening event causing cranial nerve dysfunction and depressing the centers of vital functions, such as the medulla, Roland, 2000. Assessment and Diagnostic Findings The diagnostic tests in patients with clinical findings of meningitis are as follows. 
lumbar puncture. In general, whenever the diagnosis of meningitis is strongly considered, a lumbar puncture should be promptly performed. Examination of the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, is the cornerstone of the diagnosis. CT scan. A screening computed tomography, CT, scan of the head may be performed before LP to determine the risk of herniation. Blood studies. In patients with bacterial meningitis, a complete blood count, CBC, with differential will demonstrate polymorphonuclear leukocytosis with a left shift. Chest radiography. As many as 50% of patients with pneumococcal meningitis also have evidence of pneumonia on initial chest radiography. Cultures and bacterial antigen testing. The utility of cultures is most evident when LP is delayed until head imaging can rule out the risk of brain herniation, in which cases antimicrobial therapy is rightfully initiated before CSF samples can be obtained. Serum procalcitonin testing. Increasing data suggest that serum procalcitonin PCT, levels can be used as a guide to distinguish between bacterial and aseptic meningitis in children. Medical management. Non-pharmacological management. Crystalloid infusion. If the patient is in shock or hypotensive, crystalloid should be infused until euvolmia is achieved. Caesar precautions. If the patient's mental status is altered, Caesar precautions should be considered, seizures should be treated according to the usual protocol, and airway protection should be considered. For access and oxygen administration. If the patient is alert and in stable condition with normal vital signs, oxygen should be administered, intravenous, for, access established, and rapid transport to the emergency department, ED, initiated. Pharmacologic management. Begin empiric antibiotic coverage according to age and presence of overriding physical conditions. Sulfonamides. Trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole work together to inhibit bacterial synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid. Tetracyclines. Tetracyclines inhibit protein synthesis and, therefore, bacterial growth by binding with 30S and possibly 50S ribosomal subunits of susceptible bacteria. Carbapenems. Carbapenems inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis by binding to penicillin binding proteins. Carbapenems, including meropen, can be used for the treatment of meningitis. Fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones inhibit bacterial DNA synthesis and, consequently, growth by inhibiting DNA gyrase and topoisomerases, which are required for replication, transcription, and translation of genetic material. Glycopeptides. Vancomycin inhibits bacterial cell wall synthesis by blocking glycopeptide polymerization, it is indicated for many infections caused by gram-positive bacteria. Aminoglycosides Aminoglycosides primarily act by binding to 16S ribosomal RNA within the 30S ribosomal subunit, they have mainly bactericidal activity against susceptible aerobic gram-negative bacilli. Cephalosporins, third generation Third-generation cephalosporins are less active against gram-positive organisms than first-generation cephalosporins are, they are highly active against Enterobacteriaceae, Neisseria, and H. influenzae. Antivirals Antiviral agents interfere with viral replication, they weaken or abolish viral activity, they can be used in viral meningitis. Systematic antifungals Antifungal agents are used in the management of infectious diseases caused by fungi, e.g. fluconazole. Vaccines, inactivated. Inactivated bacterial vaccines are used to induce active immunity against pathogens responsible for meningitis. Corticosteroids. The use of steroids has been shown to improve overall outcome for patients with certain types of bacterial meningitis, such as H. influenzae, tuberculosis, and pneumococcal meningitis. Osmotic diuretics. Munnitol may reduce subarachnoid space pressure by creating an osmotic gradient between CSF in the arachnoid space and plasma. Loop diuretics. Furosemide is a loop diuretic that increases the excretion of water by interfering with the chloride binding co-transport system, which, in turn, inhibits sodium and chloride reabsorption in the ascending loop of henal and distal renal tubule. Anticonvulsants. 
anticonvulsants are used to help aggressively control seizures, if present, in acute meningitis, because seizure activity increases ICP. Nursing Management Nursing management of the patient with meningitis include the following. Nursing Assessment Assessment of the patient with bacterial meningitis include Neurologic status Neurologic status and vital signs are continually assessed. Pulse oximetry and arterial blood gas values. These values are used to quickly identify the need for respiratory support. Nursing diagnosis. Based on the assessment data, major nursing diagnosis include risk for infection related to contagious nature of organism, acute pain related to headache, fever, neck pain secondary to meningeal irritation, impaired physical mobility related to intravenous infusion, neutral rigidity and restraining devices, activity intolerance related to fatigue and malaise secondary to infection, risk for impaired skin integrity related to immobility, dehydration, and diaphoresis, risk for injury related to restlessness and disorientation secondary to meningeal irritation, Interrupted family process related to critical nature of situation and uncertain prognosis. Anxiety related to treatment and risk of death. Risk for ineffective therapeutic regimen management. Nursing care planning and goals. Goals for a patient with bacterial meningitis include. Protection against injury. Prevention of infection. Restoring normal cognitive functions. Prevention of complications. Nursing Interventions Important components of nursing care include the following measures. Assess neurologic status and vital signs constantly. Determine oxygenation from arterial blood gas values and pulse oximetry. Insert cuffed endotracheal tube, or tracheostomy, and position patient on mechanical ventilation as prescribed. Assess blood pressure. Usually monitored using an arterial line, for incipient shock which precedes cardiac or respiratory failure. Rapid for fluid replacement may be prescribed, but take care not to overhydrate patient because of risk of cerebral edema. Reduce high fever to decrease load on heart and brain from oxygen demands. Protect the patient from injury secondary to seizure activity or altered level of consciousness (LOC). Monitor daily body weight, serum electrolytes, and urine volume, specific gravity, and osmolality, especially if syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone CIAD, is suspected. Prevent complications associated with immobility, such as pressure and pneumonia. Institute infection control precautions until 24 hours after initiation of antibiotic therapy, oral and nasal discharge is considered infectious. Inform family about patient's condition and permit family to see patient at appropriate intervals. Evaluation Expected patient outcomes include Avoidance of injury Avoidance of infection Restoration of normal cognitive functions Prevention of complications Complications Permanent brain damage Paralysis Shock Coma Seizures Sudden death so guys, thanks for watching my video. You can like and comment on my video, but don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel to watch quality content like this. Thank you guys.